Welcome to the Minecraft Cooking Challenge. My name is Betsy. I'm a librarian with Frederick County Public Libraries, and we have been cooking our way through the Minecrafters Cookbook by Tara Theo Harris. This item is available through digital download on Hoopla. So I downloaded this book to my phone, so I had to write my directions separately, but normally you can work just through the recipe um, on your phone, like if you were using a traditional um, printed cookbook. All right, so today we are going to make lily pad salad. And if you are familiar with Minecraft, you know that lily pads are very important because they help you walk on water and they also help you build on water. So with some very healthy and fresh ingredients, we are going to make lily pad salad. So if you've been with me before, you know that there are two very important parts of the cooking that we do here with the Minecraft Challenge. One is you need to make sure that you have the um, permission or the approval of your caregiver. So certainly if you need um, some, an adult to be in the kitchen with you, make sure that you get their permission first. Um, and then the second is we have to make sure that our hands and our face, everything is clean. So prior to getting started, you're gonna to wanna to set all of your ingredients out. And then for me, because I have longer hair, I do want to put my hair up, all right. Clip my hair up here so it doesn't get in the way. And then we're gonna wash our hands. Does anybody remember the song that I sang last time when we cooked together? Great job, you're right. It was the theme song to Jeopardy. If you sing the whole song, it lasts about 30 seconds. So let's wash our hands. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started. So there are two parts to this lily pad salad recipe. The first part is the homemade dressing, and then the second part is the salad itself. So let's go ahead and make the dressing first, all right? The first thing you're going to need, you're going to need a cup measure, or um, excuse me, a half cup measure, a quarter cup measure, a tablespoon and a half tablespoon. You're also going to need a liquid measure. It looks kind of like this, all right? You're going to need spatula, going to need some tongs or some lobster claws. And for the dressing itself, I do use a blender. So you're gonna need that too. All right, the ingredients you're gonna use for your dressing, we have olive oil, balsamic vinegar, blueberries, and then it's a mixture of honey and Dijon mustard, okay? So we're gonna take, first thing that's gonna go into our blender is the quarter cup of olive oil. Now, if you're in the kitchen a lot, you probably know that there are many different types of olive oil, and that is very important when you are going to heat the oil up, like in a pan. Um, but since we are just going to mix it, standard olive oil or whatever you have in your kitchen would be totally fine. All right, and then we're going to add to that mixture of olive oil a quarter cup of blueberries. And then I told you before, I had kind of mixed everything together and kind of see it there. So that is two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of honey, my little bear, and then one half tablespoon of Dijon mustard. So I'm going to use my spatula to kind of help get that mustard and the honey 
into the blender because it does stick. Okay, we're gonna get that all in there. And so the balsamic vinegar is very important. So in your kitchen, you might see two other very common types of vinegar. One of those is a white distilled vinegar. It typically comes in a white um, plastic container or maybe a clear container. And the other is an apple cider vinegar. Generally, you can, it's a clear bottle. You can see the color through the bottle. White distilled vinegar is very strong acidic vinegar that has no flavoring whatsoever. It can be the basis for all of the other vinegars that you would like to make. All right, a lot of people use it for cleaning as well because it has no extra fruit or acidic compounds added to it, all right? Apple cider vinegar, again, is very popular as well. Um, it is a vinegar distilled from fermented apples, which is what gives it that goldish or that kind of light brown color. Um, used a lot of times when dying Easter eggs. Um, a lot of people take apple cider vinegar for their health. Um, and so you can also use it to flavor um, fruits and vegetables as well. However, the most popular type of vinegar for that is the balsamic vinegar. Now, this balsamic vinegar, I'm going to read to you what it says on the back. It says, Aceto Balsamico di Modena. So there are two types of balsamic vinegars. The incredibly expensive vinegar that 15 to 20% of the vinegar is actually going to be the distilled um, fruit itself. And then there is this version, which is kind of mass produced for industrial use in restaurants or in kitchens and then sold in grocery stores. In order to be considered balsamic vinegar by the country or the government of Italy, it must come from either Modena, like this one, or Reggio Emilio. And those um, places, all balsamic vinegar is distilled in a wooden cask. And it just depends on what type of wood um, helps determine the price of the um, balsamic vinegar itself, as well as the flavor. So this is a, what we would say, cheaper balsamic vinegar. Um, but it is probably the most common balsamic vinegar you're going to find in your grocery store. So we have got this mixture here in our blender. So we're gonna go ahead and blend that up. A couple of pulses will be just fine. Doesn't have to be a long time on the blender. Okay, let's put that on there. All right, and get this plugged in. It's a little loud. You ready? Here we go. Okay like most of my blueberries are chopped up in there. All right, yep, looks just like the kind you would see if you, uh, kind of like a blueberry vinaigrette. Um, and so that is our salad dressing. Now, you would not have to immediately put this on the salad. You can put your lid back on it and pop it in the refrigerator within um, about a week. You should consume it in about a week. But there you go, you can have some blueberry vinegar. All right, so the salad itself. Main ingredient, does this look familiar? Anybody? Anybody out there love spinach? So this spinach um, comes from a bag. The bag spinach is pre-washed. I do always pre-wash my vegetables regardless if you buy fresh or bagged, and then I let it sit and drain for a little bit. Otherwise, it will make the salad very um, wet and very liquidy. The other thing is too, when you're washing the spinach, just to be careful, spinach bruises very easily, so you don't wanna hit it <laughs> with like a tsunami of water. You know, spray it with a sprayer um, and kind of move it around a little bit to rinse it off. You can pat it dry if you want, that's fine, or just let it drain, okay? So spinach is our main ingredient. We're gonna follow that up with a half a cup of fresh blueberries. All right. One half cup, or in this case, it's the entire container of feta cheese. All right, we're gonna drop that in there. All right. A quarter cup 
of sliced almonds. All right. And then the recipe does say a quarter cup of croutons. I love a good crouton. So I did um, add a couple of extra croutons there, but I'm not gonna put those in just yet, all right? So since this is the full salad, let me move that out of the way. The full salad, I am going to pour the full amount of dressing into the salad itself, okay? I'm gonna pour that around, kind of mix it up there. All right. Okay. So now you've got your salad with your dressing. It's very pretty. And now we're gonna use our tongs. You could also, if, the, if your bowl has a lid, you could also put the lid on it and give it a couple of gentle shakes. I'm just gonna use my, my tongs here to kind of mix it up. And get all of the feta mixed around really good. And to be honest, you could probably play with some of the ingredients. Um, obviously the lily pads are represented by the spinach, but if you wanted to try strawberries or raspberries, that would be certainly fine. Um, I used almonds, the recipe calls for almonds, but maybe you don't like almonds and you wanna try pecans or walnuts. The same with the cheese. Maybe you wanna try blue cheese. That's totally okay. We're just following the recipe exactly. But I think I probably have some true Minecrafters out there and you might wanna get into a little creative mode and that's okay. So now we've got our salad mixed up. It smells really good. So if I was going to serve this salad to my family right now, I'd go ahead and drop the croutons on and serve it to everyone. But since I'm only gonna give a little bit to myself, okay, I'm gonna put some there. I'm a big fan of feta cheese, so I always kind of search <laughs> for the cheese and the almonds. So we're gonna give a little bit of salad there, and then I'll pick, put a couple of croutons on here. And let me move my camera so you can get a good look at our lily pad salad, all right? So the first week, we made edible torches with the pretzels and the white chocolate. This week, we went a little bit of a healthier route with some lily pad salad. And then next week, we are going to make a dessert, all right? So let me give you your Minecraft hint with lily pads, all right? So if you have water on your farm, you can use the lily pads to get across the water but the water itself will still get to the plants. You're not going to block off the water getting to your farm by putting the lily pads on the water itself. It's a nice earth friendly way to get across any water that you might have on your farm in Minecraft. All right, well thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I am so happy that everyone has enjoyed the foods that they've been making through the Minecraft cookbook. Again, I found this on Hoopla, which is one of our e-content providers. It's a digital download. You just go to www.fcpl.org forward slash download and you can find all of our e-content providers there. And again, this one is on Hoopla. The title is The Minecrafter's Cookbook and it's written by Tara Theo Harris. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay safe and healthy, my friends, and I will see you next week.